The second part of the project is pretty straightforward. What we want to do is to determine the active and passive stresses for this soil profile and or the you know soil profile that I'm showing you here right here I want you to use these depths and there's compacted soil on top on the right side so we're we're creating this retaining wall here and um, we don't know how deep it is yet but we're going to assume that it goes all the way to 140 feet for the sake of uh, it's not going to go that deep but but the easiest way to do these calculations is to make the assumption that it's going to go very deep. And um, we have this anchor here. And, um, you know, you can see the depth. This is 30 feet. So this is at zero. So the wall here, the wall height, which we call the wall height H, is 30 feet. Okay, so... Zero is at the base of the wall. We have 30 feet above, and then we're going 140 feet below. And um, the water table is at 5 feet below the ground surface. So this, this soil will be dry. And um, the so I'm calling this compacted soil 1, CS1. Compacted soil 2, CS2. And then this gravel is layer one, this silt is layer two, this sand is layer three, this silt is layer four, this sand is layer five. And we have the soil properties that you need listed here. I have my gamma Ds here, gamma dry, gamma saturated. And notice that these are not saturated, so I don't have anything there. So all you need to do is use these. And then I have the Ka and Kp. And you can see that the compacted soil is only on one side of the wall. So I only have an active for that. I don't need to use the passive. For the others, I have active and passive pressure coefficients right there so that you can use them. So again, we're going to use these depths here for your soil boundaries. This is, these are the boundaries here. And this is the bottom of the wall, of course. And um, the, all you have to do for this, and everybody, everybody needs to do this, okay? So this is not uh, every person in each group does it, and then you're going to compare your answers to the other people in your group. And so the depths are given here. So um, you know, this is the ground surface right here. This is where the water table is, five. This is the top of the wall, 30 feet. And then 16 is one boundary, 40 is another, 76 is another, 127, and the bottom of the wall is 140. And these are your active stress stresses. The next table is the passive stresses. And since we're looking at the other side of the wall, we start out at the ground surface. There's the water table. 16 boundary, 40 boundary, 76 boundary, 127 boundary. 140 is the bottom of the wall. So all you have to do, you know, the only hard part here is figuring out the sigma v's. Uh, the U's are easy, and then, you know, sigma V prime, of course, is sigma V minus U, and then, as you know, you know, sigma H prime is equal to K sigma V prime. You have to figure out which K to use. So... Obviously, for the active, you're going to use the active. Over here is the passive. You use the passive. And then, of course, you all know this. I'm just repeating it. Sigma H is equal to sigma H prime 
plus u. So, you know, you could set up a spreadsheet program to do this, but if you do it, if you do that, you have to follow exactly this, these headings here. You know, all these headings here. Do not come up with anything different. You have to use these headings. So that, this, so that your end spreadsheet looks exactly like this, and it looks exactly like that. And so, this is the whole assignment. So everybody needs to do it. And um, like I say, you compare your answers to your group mates, and if you disagree, you need to talk about it and come up to some sort of agreement so that everybody in a group should come up with the same answers. And then you should turn this in. Okay, so every person needs to submit this.